Welcome to Viewpoints. My name is Ross Elliott. With me today is Laura Wilson. Laura is the Chief of Police of Stanford University. Laura is just completing her master's degree in Homeland Security. Laura's thesis is Before the Emergency, Evaluating Preparedness Alternatives for Higher Education Institutions. Welcome, Laura. Hi, Ross. Emergency preparedness is a very large topic. How did you decide to study this particular area? During our first IR, when we were talking about decision making and uncertainty, I became interested in the concept of decision making. And then in the second IR, when we were exposed to critical infrastructure protection, I became interested in risk assessments and how an event impacts a system. And it occurred to me that while there's been a lot of work done on risk assessments, how does a decision maker decide what alternative to select and how, how can you value different types of preparedness alternatives? For example, how would a decision maker choose between uh, investing in a business continuity tool, investing in a mass notification system, or investing in a CERT program? So using that framework, um, coincidentally, I guess I should add this to the story, what happened is I was actually working with a PhD student at Stanford in decision analysis. He was researching our department as part of his, master, his PhD thesis. And as I got to understand his field of work, which is decision analysis, it occurred to me that decision analysis, which is a normative approach to decision making, meaning how people should make decisions as opposed to a descriptive approach, meaning how people actually make decisions. So it occurred to me that the decision analysis field might provide a solution to, what, to the problem I was trying to solve. So thankfully, uh, I am not an engineer, nor am I a mathematician, and this particular student was extraordinarily gracious with his time and helped me out with the computational modeling that I put together on the basis of the interviews that I conducted with 10 higher education institutions. So with decision analysis, are you looking at how decisions are made, how they should be made? How does this roll out to the, to the law enforcement officer on the street? I don't know that it would necessarily roll out to a law enforcement officer. Where I think it would have applicability would be, or at least my hope, is that somebody who's more skilled than I could take my rudimentary model and develop it further so that perhaps other higher education institutions could use a similar model for evaluating different preparedness alternatives. So you said you've spoken with 10 other institutions. That was part of your research. Could you tell us a little bit about your research? Sure. What I was hoping, or what I expected to find, was that there would be commonalities across higher education institutions. Uh, what I found was not that. And so I, I was specifically looking at our institutions using strategic planning, is the organizational structure of an emergency management program, does a particular organizational structure lead to a better decision-making process? And what decision-making criteria are higher education institutions using now in order to make those preparedness decisions? And what decision criteria do the professionals think should be used? And to be honest, I came away with a broad spectrum of responses uh, almost overwhelming. So I really had to pare those down and uh, use some of my own knowledge and expertise of having been in the higher education institution field for 20 some odd years. So Chief, could you tell us where your research led you? What kind of conclusions did you come to? Certainly. I didn't come to the conclusions that I thought I would come to. I'll start with that. Uh, probably my aha moment came in looking at one particular university's emergency management program and that program is actually managed by a faculty member, which is unusual. Normally, it would be a staff member managing uh, an operational program. And I'm not proposing that faculty members should be managing operational programs or emergency management programs. But what I learned from this gentleman was the way that he organized the program. And that was using students to assist with different projects, which is certain, certainly is an economically feasible option. The other thing is he really ran his program like it was a research project. And I think there is something to be said for the validity in an academic environment that that type of approach has. The aha moment for me was not so much that we should be running, having faculty members run our programs, 
but instead, why are higher education institutions not utilizing the resources that they have in their backyard, meaning faculty and students, to help universities or colleges be better prepared for uh, emergencies or critical situations? So why is it that you concentrated then on just higher, institu higher education institutions? Well, certainly that's what's familiar to me. And secondly, there are over 18 million students enrolled in higher education institutions throughout the United States at 4,300 different institutions. And so my underlying assumption was that if higher education institutions model preparedness, then perhaps uh, adults would therefore practice, so they would be exposed. And then more importantly, if a higher education institution is prepared, then they're, they're helping their community. And if they're helping their community, then that community will be better prepared, which will help the state be better prepared, which in turn will ultimately help our nation be better prepared to respond to, prevent, mitigate either man-made terrorist activities or natural disasters. Okay. So that really goes into the theme of, of a broader application to the nation's homeland security. That was my goal. Great. Well, Laura, it sounds like a terrific um, contribution to making us all safer. And I want to thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you.